What I see as missing in the entire dating process is people slowing down to connect with themselves and understanding not only what's happening for them internally and subconsciously, but also coming into a place of welcoming it and having like love and compassion for those parts of you that you might have been resisting all this time. Because honestly, not only can you not connect with others if you're disconnected with yourself, but anything you don't welcome within yourself, you are not going to welcome in another person. Welcome to the Asian Dating Podcast. I am your host, May Bugenhagen. I am the founder and CEO of Two Asian Matchmakers, where we help men all across the U.S. who want to meet Asian women in the U.S. or Asia. I host this podcast to help Asian men and women in all ethnicities who need help with dating. And I always bring on a special guest. And today is no different. I have Sophie Love. Welcome to the show, Sophie. I'm going to read your bio a little bit here. Sophie Love's approach to matchmaking is nothing short of exceptional. As a former dating coach, Sophie's natural talent for helping individuals reach their full potential in the dating world ultimately led to her passion for matchmaking. What sets Sophie apart is her unique methodology, which draws upon her extensive training in behavioral and relationship science to better understand and pair individuals. Welcome to the show, Sophie. How are you? <laughs> Thank you, May. I'm doing great. And I'd like to say that in this moment, I'm feeling really just warm and grateful to be having this conversation with you after years of us knowing one another and collaborating and working together. It feels really great. I know, I know. Sophie, you are always one of those people that... It's just so easy to talk to. I know we've been in, you know, matchmaking groups and networking <laughs> and conferences together. And it's always such a treat to hang out with you. And I know you're in San Diego. And can you tell the audience a little bit about how you got started in this industry and what led to Sophie Love, your business? Yeah. So um, I've been... I would say date coaching plus matchmaking for over 13 years. Um, I was called into this work through my own journey to meet my magical other. And um, yeah, I broke off an engagement when I was about 27 years old thinking, oh, I'm going to be married with a kid by 30. Like that was the plan, right? Um, but guess what? It wasn't the plan. Like we make plans, God laughs. So I, I wasn't excited about this person I was going to marry. I broke it off, became single again. This was at a time when online dating was just starting to get really revved up. Um, and then I sort of, you know, I immersed myself in the husband search. And so I went online, I did J date, I did match, I did eHarmony, I did all the things. I went on so many dates and it was so hard. It was so hard, May. I had a therapist the whole time. I had a mentor. I was like, how do we do this? This is so, so many things came up along the way. It was hard being, going on these dates online and then seeing the person there online again, the next day after your day <laughs> active. Oh my gosh, but I'm on here too. Wait, wait, I don't want him to go. You know, it's just so many things, right? Like, um, and so I, I just sort of over time came up with my own kind of method, like, okay, how do I do this? How do I navigate the trenches of dating and make this easier on myself and more effective? Like I wanted to find a partner. I wanted to get married. I wanted to have kids. That was my goal. That was what I thought was going to make me happy. And it has made me happy, but guess what? I realized down the line, mm, being happy does not constitute reaching that specific goal. It's all within myself, but that more on that later. Um, so yeah, so, and then as I met my feet, my my now husband, Michael, um, people started, I was like the dating girl, like, oh, Sophie has all the dating stories. Sophie has all the dating advice. People started sending me their friends and family for like dating advice, helping them with their online dating. Oh, Sophie knows how to do an online profile. Plus she does this, she's in therapy, like, and so I just started date coaching, like on the side of my regular career, which was as a wholesale apparel rep, um, I started charging people <laughs> hourly to work with them and help them navigate. I started writing about it a little bit, but really 
like I was really enlivened by helping people navigate this process um, because it is so hard. And so I did that. And then I was approached by someone at a time when I was kind of transitioning careers that there was a large national matchmaking agency that was hiring. So I interviewed, got the job, started working with clients. Three months later, I had a couple engaged and I was like, this is, this is it. Like I love, I love serving people in this way. I love connecting them. I'm a natural connector. I already like have a million friends, have a massive social network. And so it just felt so natural and hearing people's stories, like really hearing, like I've always had like such a deep fascination with, I would say the human experience and the human condition. And so for me, I was like, this is it. Like hearing people's stories, connecting them, fostering these, these really beautiful connections and then creating relationships. And so that's, yeah. And then, and then I was at the large agency for national agency for four, four, over four years during which time I started my own business. I was a contractor there, so I was allowed to do that. And I started having my own private clients. I started doing online dating for them, uh, online takeovers, coaching them. And then eventually I got to fully break off, spread my wings and start Sophie Love. So, and how long has Sophie Love been in business? So it's been in business, I would say since 2019, okay. um, it was when we, when, when I started and opened up and put up my website and started taking my own clients. So yeah. now tell me about your online takeover. What exactly do you do? Can you explain that to someone who's listening? They're like, what is that? Yeah. So that's like an online dating concierge. So what we do is what we found is that when you take, so the online dating process is really like, we know a lot about it now. It's been 10 years, by the way. I don't know if you know that it's been years since the Tinder swipe was created. So the first swipe. Um, and so we have so much information on how this process affects people who are engaged in it. And so there's really this very like addictive quality to it. Um, there's, they've already shown in research that the, that the dopamine hit you get from swiping is the exact same dopamine hit you get from pulling on a slot machine lever and in a casino. It's like the, oh, maybe the next, right? Maybe the next one's gonna be. So there's that. And so what I found is that as people engage in this process, there's this like addiction to the dopamine. There's also what I noticed these called like these little micro rejections, which are like, you spent like two hours swiping one night, the next day you wake up, oh, I have like six matches or eight or whatever it is. Or maybe you have a million matches, but you start chatting with people and then they just drop off because a million people are chatting with a million different people, right? So the whole thing is so transactional and really like devoid of actual human experience. It's more of a checklist shopping process. So what I found is like, okay, if I take the client out of that experience, like remove them and we do that part for them and we just slowly present them with matches, people who are interested in meeting them that we've connected on, on with on their behalf. So we are them online. The process becomes a lot different because somebody comes into each match and each date kind of not totally jaded after having like a million ghosted conversations and all that. Just, just we just really like take take away all of the drudgery the dehumanization all of that and we we take care of that part for them the legwork and just allow them to come in from like a fresher perspective so that's what we do and it helps right so they're now going into these dates like just focusing on this person not all that extra baggage that went with it Right. And so what, what else is part of the process for us is we coach them also. So that's where we bring in things like authentic relating. We're also giving them some foundational skills and tools to slow down, connect with themselves for a moment before they show up to connect with another person. Because really what I found in my own kind of 
growth and healing journey myself is the more connected I become to myself and what's happening subconsciously for me and understanding that the more space I have internally just to effortlessly connect with others. And I, I realized this as I was doing this myself, and I'm like, oh my God, I need to bring this to my matchmaking clients. Like this is actually going to be the game changer. And it has been. And so I have a perfect example. I have a client, she, you know, she's 50. We gave her these foundational skills. We practiced them in coaching. And then she got to go on dates without the baggage of doing online dating, but we brought her these dates. And then guess what? Like on the third one, that's it. She was in relationship. And she had told me, for two to three weeks prior to signing on, she said, my person is not online. Uh, the, uh, the person that I'm meant to be with, and that's a story we all, people like to tell themselves. Oh, the kind of person I would date, they're not online. Well, guess what? 95% of single people are online. <laughs> so, Yeah, I believe so. that online dating is such a great tool for people who are looking and online dating is great as long as you are strategic and you have the skills to do online dating. I mean, it is a skill. You can't just go in there and think I'm just going to swipe on everybody and I'm just going to hit the jackpot and just be random. Like you have to be strategic, intentional and with a plan. And I think that's where people are missing it. It's like they're not putting in the time to learn about online dating and to figure out how to best do online dating. Now, instead of online dating in that fast paced world, mm -hmm. I know we were talking a little bit earlier off camera um, about your uh, other things you do at your firm. So can mm -hmm. you tell me a little bit about those uh, workshops that you do and what that entails? Yeah, sure. So we obviously, we offer executive matchmaking, which in, you know, the traditional sense, like hiring executive recruiter, meeting with our clients, finding out what are their, you know, where do they come from? Where are they at now? What are they looking to achieve? What are their goals? Essentially getting that checklist, right? And understanding like what, what type of partners are we looking for? So, so that's something we offer. We have recruiters on our team. We collaborate with other matchmakers, May you being one of them, you know how we work. Um, and so, and so we also, you know, we get lots of referrals. We have a very broad database of single members. We, re we source matches however we need to, in order to get our clients out on these like high caliber vetted matches and introductions. So that's, I would say, the main bread and butter. But what comes in addition to that, like I said, that's almost the external, right? Our, our process is really, I would say, much more what I would like to see as transformative, not just transactional. And so um, the transformative aspect is, okay, I'm going to connect you with these people that meet your criteria, but simultaneously, I'm going to help you connect to yourself. Because essentially what, what I see as missing in the entire dating process is people slowing down to connect with themselves and understanding not only what's happening for them internally and subconsciously, but also coming into a place of welcoming it and having like love and compassion for those parts of you that might, you might've been resisting all this time, because honestly, not only can you not connect with others if you're disconnected with yourself, but anything you don't welcome within yourself, you are not going to welcome in another person. And what that does is blocks connection right away. And we don't realize it until we realize it, right? And so we work with our clients with a team of coaches, highly trained authentic relating relational coaches. We use internal family systems and parts work. All of these are methodologies that are evidence-based and proven to help people come to a place of um, self-compassion, self-love, connection, calm, clarity, openness, and really wholeness, right? And we're teaching them how to bring their whole selves into the relationships. And so we do this through coaching. We also do this through 
what's called our closer events. They're called closer because our goal is for people to be able to become closer with one another. And so what we do is it's like matchmaking combined with a relational personal growth workshop. So it's 10 men, 10 women, all of whom on paper are matches for each other. So you can leave your checklist at the door. Now everyone has been vetted by my team, background check, the whole nine. It's as if you are going on a matchmaking date. And then we put them through a three hour, fully facilitated curated workshop to teach them these skills of authentic relating. And they get to meet and interact with every person that's at the event. And in, in, we do like games and icebreakers and it's a set of practices. Nobody ends up talking about what they do for a living or a vacation they went on. Everybody ends up dropping in with themselves and really connecting on a more vulnerable level. And afterwards, we facilitate connections between the people who want to stay in connection with each other. We have a whole system. They log in. They let us know who they want to connect with. People have made friends. You can connect with same same gender, opposite. We're there for human connection, right? Like, let's take the stakes down. Let's forget about the outcome of dating, which is what brings people's facades up. And let's just bring the human aspect back to connecting. And so that's what we're doing at the events. Um, people are telling us they're having better dates afterwards based on these skills that they're learning. Um, it's just been amazing. We've had couples form from the closer events. Um, and yeah, I mean, I feel like, I don't know, I almost feel like this is my way of starting to heal the dating space. Yeah. I love it. How often do you have these closer events? So we started them in January. We've had five since then. Uh, so we were trying to do them every like six weeks or so. We paused after we had one in the beginning of June and we took a break for the summer because everyone was traveling like every. <laughs> so we were like, it's not a good time. Uh, because they are so curated, right? Like we're curating this group. So um, we're starting them back up in, in the fall. So we're starting them back up in September, which we're so excited about. And sneak peek for you and your listeners only. Um, we are formulating a little bit of an online experience as well, just to open this up, this type of work, these skills, this workshop we're opening it up and we're probably going to be running a little online program for people who are interested in doing that. Um, and, and I would like to offer it in a four week container where they would meet once a week and have like this group experiential um, learning process, right. Personal growth, but everyone will be single still within our network. Um, and we'll be doing that teaching authentic relating. We'll also be doing it potentially teaching internal family systems and parts work. I feel like when people can connect while they themselves are growing and learning, it's it's like it, that's magical to me um, versus, I don't know, just being sitting on a date and trying to force yourself to have this like interview, right? So. It's almost like a activity of 10 women, 10 men, and you're doing an activity. It's like a group date almost, but you're it going is. in there with the mentality that, hey, I want to learn something. Hey, I want to make this better for me when I do go on a date and when I have to relate one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, even if they pick up one-tenth of what you're teaching or showing mm -hmm. them, it's still going to make them better. So that's very, very exciting. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. We always get the big laugh and the big takeaway. You know, when people are on a date, you know, you're sitting on a date and you're like, oh God, this person's just like, you notice yourself, oh, they've been talking about their ex for, uh, this. you know, like the mind starts and that's when people shut down, right? The minute things feel uncomfortable for them, they start shutting down and then connection is blocked completely, right? You shut down and we, we give them this one, Ryle, our facilitator and co-creator, he is this you know what a great question to ask on a date is? It's just to slow down for a moment and say, can I ask you something? Like, can we slow down for a moment? I'm wondering what, how's this date going for you? Like, how how is it feeling for you so far? And just 
like dropping in, taking out yourself out of the like information exchange and the ping pong yeah. conversation, dropping into the present moment, it's always unscripted. It's truly like the antidote to dating boredom because it's always new. There's never anything not new about dropping into what's happening for you in this given moment. And so people just love that. They're like, oh, I've been asking that on dates. Like, how's this date going for you? Yeah. I mean, that's what, a if the date, what if the date's going poorly? Like, do you just say, this is kind of weird. I'm not really used to us not connecting. Like, you know, you're just right with what's going on. Right. Ima right. So imagine that conversation, how much more interesting and cool would that be to have a conversation? Like, like, Oh, how's the state going for you? Well, um, I don't know. I, I'm noticing myself talking a lot to fill the space. And I'm wondering like when you slow down, right. And actually notice, what are you feeling? I'm, I'm noticing that you haven't really asked me anything. And so I'm feeling this need to talk. And then the other person suddenly is like, oh, we're in connection now. Now I understand. Oh, I'm really sorry. Like I didn't realize that I hadn't even stopped to ask you anything. Or maybe they're feeling really nervous. Like, oh, I notice myself talking a lot because I do that when I'm nervous and I'm just feeling nervous to be here. How, how does that feel to hear? And then then the other person can probably relate on many be levels. Like, oh, right? don't like, be nervous. <laughs> like, and yeah, or, like or, laugh or I was nervous or too. Yeah, right. like, oh yeah, I was nervous too. I was nervous sitting down, but once you started talking um, and we started chatting, I felt myself kind of calming down and realizing this might be more fun. Or, I mean, or, I mean, honestly, I coached clients to say, like when someone starts to behave a certain way, like, there's the talking about the X, right? So you could say like, you know, I noticed something coming up for me right now. It's a little uncomfortable to share, but can I share it with you? Like you set the context, you're asking for permission. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. She's going to share something uncomfortable. Okay, sure. So I'm noticing that you're mentioning your, you keep talking about your ex and these experiences you had. And there's a part of me that's starting to think or make an assumption that you're still maybe connected to them. Maybe you're not over that relationship. That's what's coming up for me right now. What is it like to hear that? And you know what? That's a conversation to me that should not be avoided because in the end, if that conversation never took place, that date would have ended. And that person who was thinking that would just be like, Oh yeah, he didn't shut up about his ex. He's not ready. I don't want to, I don't want to see him again. Right. But at least there was this open connection. And then suddenly you might learn something that makes you feel much more aligned and connected to them. Or you could make a more informed decision like, Oh yeah, maybe it'll point out to them that they're not ready. Maybe that in and of itself will be this like trailhead of discovery. I mean, why should we not connect on this vulnerable emotional level? Like, what are we so afraid of? You know? So you're saying that if, for example, if someone talks about their ex and they're rambling on about it, that's when you take a moment and pause and be like, okay, I just noticed something really interesting. Do you want to hear it? And then you yeah. just say that. Um, yeah. You could say it's uncomfortable because it is uncomfortable, uncomfortable right? right? Like, it's like, oh, Mm, I'm noticing something coming up and I'm a little nervous to share it because it right. is, but it's so may we, when we start revealing what's happening for us, we realize how much energy it takes to actually withhold. Yeah. And we're always withholding, right? It's normal. That's what we do to survive in this world. It is so liberating to be able to not only notice what's happening, but just to reveal it. Mm -hmm in these interactions and just in everyday life, by the way, this isn't just an on dates. This is truly like the path to authentic connection with anyone you encounter. So what else can people say on a date? What's another example of authentically connecting mm. with someone? Well, um, there's, there's a couple of really fun games and I'm trying to slowly incorporate them into the dates. Um, you know, there's, there's a game, there's a game, there's the curiosity game. 
where you actually set the context that one person is going to spend a couple of minutes just noticing and naming what they're truly curious about to find out from this other person. And it can be anything, right? And so really sitting down, naming those questions, and then the other person lets you know what they're comfortable answering. They can, they don't have to answer, but they can. And so what happens is curiosity is usually based on assumptions, right? Like, oh, I assume this, but like, actually, let's check that assumption. Like, let's, let's, there's something amazing. Like, let's, re let's relieve yourself from the burden of like thinking, you know, anything, right. And just discover what's actually true about a person. And so the curiosity game, like we actually set the context for our clients. Sometimes we send them with this in the email and say, okay, we want you to play this curiosity game on the first date. Um, you know, I think something really simple that you can do, there's another practice called being with you. I notice, and you can literally just slow down and notice what it feels like for you to be with this other person. And you can set the context and reveal that. Um, I mean, honestly, I think it really boils down to just slowing down out of the autopilot, May, of like thinking of what you're going to say next, mm -hmm. but like actively listening and noticing what comes up for you as you listen to this person share, reveal your experience and stay in connection and ask them what it feels like for them to hear you reveal that. So that's staying in connection. It's not just sharing how you feel, mm -hmm. but it's then asking them how it felt to hear that reveal. And so we, these are things that we really do. We run through, we practice through them during the workshop and we do them in our coaching as well. So that our clients can bring them into practice because not every, and my goal honestly is not to just have this be only our clients knowing this, right? Like my goal is to have everyone, like I said, to me, this is a healing practice for the connective space that we are all in. So yeah, I don't know if that answered your question, but we're just so busy all the time going on all these dates and being an autopilot, asking somebody, where do you live? Where do you, where were you born? What do you do for a living? Like, where's your favorite vacation spot? Where's like, yeah, versus we're forgetting to just almost like not filter everything and just let it go and see what happens. And you know, really uh, connect with people that way. Um, yeah, May, I want to say something about that. So what you just described, there's, and you, we learn this during our workshops and during our coaching, there's three levels of communication. There's three levels of connection or conversation, sorry. Level one is what you just said, exchange of facts. May, you're a matchmaker. Oh, so am I. Cool. Oh, you're in San Diego. Awesome. You're in Colorado. Great. Oh, how was your latest vacation? What, you know, who's your family? Where'd you grow up? Those are just facts. Yeah. Then there's, it's very surface level, right? There's no emotion there. Then there's level two, which are feelings about facts. Oh, I really love being a matchmaker. You know, I just really feel called to this work. I love living in Colorado. I have this amazing relationship with my family. You know, here's how I feel about the friends that have supported me. Yeah, you know, so there's feelings about facts. That's like one level down. But then the third level is the relational level. And that is where you drop into the present moment. And that is the fully unscripted part of connection. And that is really, like I said, noticing what's happening for you, revealing it and opening up more of yourself to be connected with. You're more connectable when you open up more and reveal more things to connect with and that is what's actually happening in the present moment. And you're there to welcome what the other person has to connect with. So that's where real connection happens, not in the autopilot exchange of facts. <laughs> right, right. So what else about uh, this area of topic can you voice to help the listeners out there? Like what else can they do on their next date that can almost mm. instantly help them have a better experience relating to them. 
Ooh, I'll give a very simple practice. Okay. okay. Like so, so simple, really just like, and I, by the way, I'm about to record a guided practice for this thing specifically. So stay tuned. I'll happily share it. It's going to be stored on our site. People can access it. And it's really like a short and simple connect to self. So before you go on a date, okay, before, and it, you can do this in the car, give yourself an extra five minutes, just five minutes and put on headphones, shut off your phone notifications, just really slow down. And I don't know if you're familiar with four, seven, eight breathing box breathing. Have you ever heard of that? So what it does is it really calms your central nervous system. So you take a deep breath in through your nose all the way to the top to a count of, you know, then you hold it at the top for a count of six or seven seconds. So you're really holding it at the top and then you sort of purse your lips and you exhale slow and long and your exhale actually should be longer than your inhale was. So the practice, so they say four, seven, eight, Breathe in through your nose for four counts, hold for seven counts at the breath, top of the breath, and then at least eight counts of a slow, slow release. So I would say you do that three or four times, just the breathing, and then just drop in, get out of, try, notice whatever is happening, literally what is coming up, what emotion, what feeling. Maybe you have a buzzing somewhere in your body. Maybe you notice your stomach's a little in a knot. Maybe take a, take an inventory. Just notice what comes up and just welcome it. Welcome. If, if you're noticing yourself resisting, oh gosh, I'm nervous about this state or I don't even want to go on this state. Welcome the feeling and the thought, oh, okay be with it, connect with yourself before the date. And so really turning towards whatever is happening, coming into compassion, not resisting it, bringing it forth and being aware of it and maybe turning towards it and trying to understand and asking like, what is coming up? Like, why is this so, And but maybe you're excited, maybe you're nervous, Wh whatever it is, right? Just slowing down and connecting to yourself before a date, that alone is going to change the way you show up on the date. It's going to bring you in at a slower, calmer pace, and hopefully you're not going to be in a full autopilot and maybe you can consider sitting down and when they say, how are you? Because that's what, so how are you doing? Most people just program to say, I'm good. So how's, how's it going? Maybe you reveal how you're actually doing based on that connect to self that you did right before. So I love it. I love it. So Sophie, before I let you go, can you tell us who is your ideal client, who you like to work with, how do they find you and all that good stuff? Yeah. So I work with all ages, really men and women. I match men and women. I coach men and women. Um, and we, we have a, a, a wide variety of programs that we do with people. So if they want to come in just for the coaching, or if they want to come in and do the online takeover, plus the coach, you know, we will, I curate a program that works for every client and what they're looking for, what their needs are, what their budget is, all of that. Um, men and women, we work, I mainly work with heterosexual couples, um, always love LGBTQ clientele. I typically, we coaching, yes, my network in terms of that is not set up. So I always refer them to our amazing LGBTQ community matchmakers. Um, but yeah. And so, um, I would say anywhere aged from like, typically like late twenties. I mean, my oldest client right now is 74. So I have a very wide range. Um, anybody in California, I would say California is my focus, the West Coast. I for for matchmaking, for online dating concierge and coaching, full national coverage. We can do that anywhere. Um, I even have an international client right now. So, you know, through our network, we we can we can collaborate. Um, and you know, I really I would say like my ideal client 
I, I really am looking to work with people who are, are interested in, um, and are open to having, I would say more of a, um, transformative experience versus a transactional experience. I mean, I can, I can do the transaction. I can say here, here, okay, give me your checklist. Here are your matches. Um, but my aliveness and my excitement is around working with individuals who are, are, you know, I would say just like under, just starting to understand like, oh, whatever I'm doing isn't working. Like what, whatever I'm doing isn't working. So I'm going to bring in an expert. I'm going to hire someone. I'm going to outsource to get a different result, right? We have that, that quote from Albert Einstein, the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over expecting a different result. And so I would love to work with people who are open and trusting in us and the process and what we have to offer to not only bring them connections externally, but to connect them internally as well. Because that to me is the key to, to successful connections and long-term relationships, not just the introduction, but yeah. really the entire, it's really like an integrative holistic approach. So yeah. It sounds like you have amazing clients that want to change, that admit they want to change. And I've always felt that in the 15 years I've been in business, it's the clients I have the most success with are the ones who come in saying, May, can you help me? I want some help. I need some help. What are some suggestions for me? Not the ones that come in as a matchmaking client and think they know everything already. Like the ones mm -hmm. don't even want me to coach them. It's like, okay, um, I've been doing this for a while. I think you can trust me. I think you could be open-minded to learn something new and really embrace that. And I feel like the most successful clients I have are the ones who are willing to change, who are willing to look at something in a different light. So I totally get what you're saying to help people who want to transform versus here's the transactional dates. Here's a list of people I can set you up with, but good luck. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. I feel, I feel you so much in that. It's like, it's like when people come in and they have even the slightest awareness that they are the common denominator of what's been happening so far. And they're like, okay, yes, I want you to help me with introductions, but what's going wrong? Like, what isn't working? And I always am like, we don't realize what's running under the hood for us yeah. until we realize what's running under the hood, uh, you know? And so isn't it such a joy to be able to just even scratch past that surface with people. Um, it's just, there's just so, I tell them right off the bat, I'm like, there's so much of a higher chance of success here because we're really doing this from the inside out, you know? So I love that, May, I'm feeling Aww. you. Well, thank you so much, Sophie. Sophie Singer of Sophie Love, her company. If you guys want to find her, I will include all of her information and her full bio in the show notes and for ladies out there i'm always on the lookout for lovely asian women to be part of my database my rolodex i would love to set you up if you're open to it and help you find a great guy and men <laughs> if you're open to hiring a matchmaker i would love to speak with you and if i can't help you i will direct you to a matchmaker that can. So thank you, Sophie, for joining thank me on you, the show May. today on the Asian <laughs> Dating Podcast. And have a good day, everybody. Bye. Bye.